Hello again, and it's time for another video, and this video is going to be all about the performance process when putting together a show. One of my biggest pet peeves about being involved in theater is dealing with people who know nothing about the process that goes into making a show. There seems to be, especially in terms of high school productions and community theater productions, this misconception that a show is not all that difficult. I often get into arguments about the level of commitment it takes to prepare for a show compared to the commitment it takes to be on, say, a football team. They are very evenly matched. And I would even argue that a show requires more work than being on a sports team, but I'm a bit biased in that regard. So this video is all about the production process, what it takes to put on a show, and the level of commitment and energy it requires to make that show a success. So let me begin by walking you through the rehearsal process. I'd like to preface this by saying that this is my own approach to directing a show, and I know that it's the same approach that a lot of other directors use. However, every director is going to be different, and some are going to have different styles and ways they organize their rehearsals. Let's start with a non-musical. To begin with, the read-through. Most directors will start off their rehearsal process with a read-through. This is where all the actors come together to read through the entirety of the script. This time is also used for the director to talk about expectations and explain their vision for the show. Sometimes designers will be in attendance and will share their visions for set, costumes, makeup, etc. This is to get everyone on the same page before jumping into rehearsals. The first two weeks. We start with blocking the show. Blocking, for you laymen out there, is the stage directions, where an actor stands on stage, where they move to, and when they move. This process of blocking a full-length show can take several days, typically one to two weeks, where the director will break the show down into smaller, easier-to-manage sections. Fine-tuning. Once blocking is complete, then rehearsals are focused on running these sections again and again and again. Actors not only get the repetition, which in turn helps them memorize their lines and blocking, but this is where a director can fine-tune the blocking, discuss the subtler parts of the show, such as character development, character interactions, meaning and themes, and so on, and to help actors more clearly define their performance. This is typically the time when actors get to play around with the roles and work with the director and fellow actors to find the delivery that is the best. The fine-tuning process can last several weeks, depending on the length of your overall rehearsal process. Now, in the case of high school theater and even some community theaters, this is also the time that directors use to work with less experienced actors to improve their craft. For me, I tend to spend a great deal of time teaching the basics of acting to many who have never been on the stage before. The more inexperienced the cast, the more time I need to spend on this and the less time I have to work on fine-tuning the show, which is why it is typical for high school productions to be of lower quality than most other shows. Now imagine for a moment you are a math teacher who is assigned the task of teaching your students algebra. However, you discover on the first day that most of your students are severely lacking in basic arithmetic skills. As any math teacher will be able to tell you, you cannot be successful at algebra if you don't have a firm foundation in arithmetic. So instead of diving into solving for x, you will need to spend time getting your students caught up on their basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. In the end, the result may be poorer scores on their algebra test, but you still were able to teach them something and advance them from where they were at the beginning of the class. Keep this in mind the next time you see a high school show. You do not know where those students started off at the beginning of the rehearsal process, and for them, that show may be the biggest thing they've ever accomplished. And the next show they do will be even better now that they have a stronger foundation. Runs. After the fine-tuning process, you start running full acts and eventually the full show, allowing actors to get a feel for the story they are telling and the stamina they will need to tell it. My personal style during this phase is to sit back and observe without stopping the rehearsal. I take notes, which I then share with actors afterward, allowing them time to complete a run without interruption, which I believe is crucial to a successful show. But again, every director has their own style. This process 
typically lasts a couple of weeks. Tech and dress rehearsals. The last week or sometimes two weeks are dedicated to incorporating all the technical elements into the show. These include costumes, lights, sound, movement of set pieces, makeup, and so on. A cast can be completely thrown by these elements as they are adding to the millions of other things they already need to focus on. This is why sufficient time needs to be given to running a show with the tech. A whole new mess of issues will always arise during this time, and a cast and crew need time to iron out the problems. A lot of theaters will often schedule a Saturday morning tech rehearsal specifically designed to throw all of these elements at the cast at once. These tech rehearsals will often last several hours longer than a normal rehearsal, but once it's finished, the rehearsals that follow will run a lot smoother. Preview A lot of theaters will have preview performances. Professional theaters often have several. This is a performance where an audience is invited to come see the show. Typically, said audience is made up of friends and family, people who are much less judgmental when things go wrong. This performance is to allow the cast a chance to perform before a crowd of people, which adds a whole new element to the production, before actual performances. Performances. Every performance night has an actor call, which for most theaters is one hour before the curtain. During this time, actors prepare themselves for the stage. They put on their makeup and their costumes, perform warm-ups, and so on. The crew is also busy preparing the stage, getting props and scenery set, addressing any last-minute issues, running sound checks, and so on. When you see a performance, be sure to remember that all those actors and crew members were at that theater at least an hour before the curtain went up. Strike. Now, this is for high school productions and most community theater productions, but strike is something that involves everyone, from the actors to the crew to the directors, and usually happens immediately following the final performance. Strike is the dismantling of the show. The set gets torn down, props get put away, costumes are gathered for laundering, and general cleaning up takes place. For high school and community theater productions, actors and all other volunteers are usually obligated to help with strike, but with more people involved, the faster it goes. And a lot of theaters will end it all with a party of some sort, putting a final button on the whole process. Now let's talk about musicals. (laughs) Musicals are a whole different beast. In addition to everything I just talked about, there is also a music and dance element added. This means not only more stuff for actors to learn, but more people involved in the process. Typically, the rehearsal process for a musical is a lot longer than a non-musical, adding several weeks to the length. Music. Anywhere from a week to two weeks, sometimes longer depending on the show, is dedicated to just learning music. Actors have multiple musical numbers to learn, complete with solos, duets, melodies, harmonies, and so on. And this means the addition of a music director. Aside from the artistic director, who is in charge of the whole shebang, typically does all the blocking, guides the vision of the show, the music director is in charge of making sure the musical elements come together. This not only means making sure that the actors know their stuff, but coordinating the pit as well. Now, the pit, again for you laymen, is the orchestra, which can range anywhere from a huge full orchestra with winds, brass, strings, and so on, to just a small band with a guitarist, bass, keys, and drums. The pit will then have a pit conductor, which sometimes is also the music director, but oftentimes will be a separate individual. Dance. Most musicals involve dance. There are some that don't require any dancing at all, some that require just a little bit of dancing, and many, many others that require a great deal of dancing. Another one to two weeks, sometimes more, will be dedicated to just learning choreography. Yet another element for actors to learn. This requires a choreographer. It is their job to not only design the choreography for each number, but to make sure that the actors are learning said choreography. Bringing it all together. Like with a non-musical, time must be dedicated to blocking the show as well, which is another week or two. 
and then all the elements come together. Depending on the length of your rehearsal process, these three elements may be mashed together right away if your rehearsal time is short, which can make for a lot of information being thrown at actors all at once. This is typical for high school productions and a lot of community theater shows. The first few weeks of rehearsal can be extremely overwhelming for an actor and requires a great deal of mental and physical energy. And that is the basic production process. I hope this has offered a little bit of insight into what goes into creating a show and will hopefully garner a little more respect for the final product. Theater is a huge, huge commitment. And in the case of high school and community theater, no one is getting paid to do it. Those actors not only are putting in a great deal of energy into the show, but are also balancing out a full-time job or schoolwork as well. Keep that in mind the next time someone tells you that they're in a show and maybe offer a little bit of respect and maybe even some condolences. See you next time.